Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. As promised, I will be going over problems regarding uh, effective force and work and um, an inclined slope versus a flat slope and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at the first problem. So I'll walk you through the steps uh, to help you uh, draw the proper um, drawing and uh, list the information and solve. So I suggest that you pause the video every once in a while and try to do those problems on your own and then look at my work to see if you arrive to the same answer. So here's the first question. A child is pulling a rope tied to a cart with a force of 30 newtons and at an angle of 25 degrees. What is the effective force? So first, is this an inclined slope uh, or an inclined plate or a, a flat plane? So an inclined plane or a flat plane. Sorry, I can't pronounce properly. So it doesn't talk about a slope, so we can assume it's on a flat surface. So if I draw this, so I have a little cart and I apologize, I do not draw well. So I have a cart and the cart is being pulled at an angle of 25 degrees and with a force of 30 newtons. Now, since this is a flat surface, so normally when we draw a surf, oops, when we draw a surface, we are going to show it like this to show that this is kind of the floor. So if it's a flat uh, surface, we're gonna use cosine. So we're trying to find what is the effective force. The effective force is over here, force effective. So it's always in the same direction as the movement, parallel to the movement. So we're going to use cosine, so cosine of 25 is equal to the effective force over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the applied force, so over 30 newton. Okay, and this will give us an effective force of 27.2 newtons. Okay, so that's for the first part of the question. This is a multi-step question. Secondly, what force would the child need to apply to lift the toy if the mass was, its mass was 1.5 kilograms? So if you recall, when we look at a situation like this, we have, I'm just gonna close the triangle, but not completely. This is the lifting component Technically, it should be Fn. The, they call it normal, but I like to call it lifting just because it speaks more to my students. So we're trying to find this component. This is fighting with the force of gravity, right? Whichever one has the greater value will win. Either the toy, which is here, will get lifted or it won't. Or it'll stay on the ground if gravity is stronger. So we found that this force here, the effective force was 27.2 Newton. Now, the force of gravity, we know that is mass, so force of gravity should be mass times 9.8, because this is on Earth. So 1.5 kilo times 9.8. I can at least calculate that. Um, and that would give me 14.7 Newton. So this here is 14.7 Newton. So in order to lift a toy, the child has to have a lifting component of at least 14.7. So this is a minimum, actually a bit over 14.7. So they're asking you to find which force should be the applied force if this side here should be at least 14.7, actually a tad above. Now, we're working with the hypotenuse and we're working with the opposite side of the angle. If you remember, the angle was, I think it was 30 degrees, no, 25 degrees. So the angle over here is 25 degrees. So now we, we want the opposite. So if we do Sokotoa, so opposite is sine of 25. 
is equal to so so katoa opposite opposites are over hypotenuse so we're looking for the hypotenuse so opposite which is the lifting component over the hypotenuse which is the applied force okay so that's what we're looking for what force should the child apply in order to actually lift it so fa gives me in this case 34.8 newtons now if the child applies 34.8 newtons that means the lifting component will be equal to the force of gravity if they're even nothing gets lifted up so that means in reality your answer should be that the applied force should be greater than 34.8 newtons okay so force of gravity is mass times the gravitational pull on earth which is 9.8 so my fg my force of gravity is 14.7 so that means if I want to be able to lift the object, I need to have a lifting component that is at least as strong as this one. And from here, I can find what applied force there should be. So if FL has to be at least 14.7, we're doing opposite over hypotenuse, so we're using sine of the angle will find the opposite force. The opposite force is 34.8. That is if both are equal, but we don't want them to be equal. We want this one to be stronger. So in reality, we want this to be just a tad higher. So it has to be greater than 34.8 Newtons. Okay, so this is a little bit more complex. It's a few extra steps. Um, hopefully this was clear. All right, how much work did the child perform if the toy was pulled over, oops, this is misspelled, was pulled over five meters. So we know that to find work, we need the effective force times the distance. So work will be equal to, we had calculated the effective force to be 27.2 newtons. And the distance, it says five meters. The distance always has to be in meters. And that will give me 136 joules, okay? So it's as simple as that. Always, always work with the effective force. It's always the force that is in, that is in the same direction as or parallel to the movement times the distance traveled. Okay, so that those are the typical questions you could be asked if an object is moving on a flat plane, okay? So on the floor, for example. Now let's take a look at an inclined plane. So a cart weighing 20 Newton is on an inclined plane of 40 degrees. What is the force component that makes the cart roll down? Okay, let's draw this. So there's an inclined plane. Okay, so the floor would be here. There's a cart on that incline and it's going to be rolling down. So I know that this component or this side of the triangle should be my effective force. Now, it says that the angle is 40 degrees and I know that the cart weighs 20 newtons. So that means the force of gravity, which is going in the direction of the floor, that part is 20 newtons okay now if i close my triangle and that's the difficulty with an inclined plane once you understand how to draw it you're okay but some people have a harder time drawing it so the force of gravity is always perpendicular to the ground okay it's pulling towards the crust of the earth or the floor or whatnot so this component here is always perpendicular to the ground so straight down so this is the weight of my cart. Now I know that if this is 40 degrees, this has to be 40 degrees. I'm sorry, this is not very clear. So this has to be 40 degrees. So what I'm missing here is really my effective force, which is the force that is parallel to the movement. So this side of my triangle. 
Okay, so I'm looking for opposite over hypotenuse, okay, because my right angle is over here. So I'm going to do sine of 40 degrees is equal to opposite, which is my effective force, over hypotenuse, which is 20 newtons. And so that means the part of the force of the force of gravity that makes the whole cart roll down is 12.9 newtons okay so again the difficulty is to draw the triangle the rest is just math i don't think that's the biggest problem okay next question a girl is pushing a suitcase at an angle of 35 degrees with a force of 122 newtons if the work applied on the suitcase is 1,200 joules, over what distance has she been applying this force? Oh my, okay. Let's take a look. Let's take another color. Let's take green. So she's pushing a suitcase at an angle of 35 degrees. It's not talking about a slope, so it's really just the same as usual. You'll have your suitcase and it's being basically pushed at an angle of 35 degrees, okay? So whether somebody is pulling or pushing, it comes out to the same. So you could figure that it's a little girl and she's small and she's much shorter than the suitcase. So she would be over here and she's pushing basically in that direction. Um, she's pushing with a force of 122 newtons. She's pretty strong. Uh, the work applied. Okay, so we know that work is equal. So let's see what they're asking us and how does this fit into the bigger picture. So work is equal to effective force times distance. Now, they're asking me to find the distance. So they're asking me to find this. They're giving me the work, which is 1200 joules but I don't have the effective force because I don't have this side of my triangle. So that means I need to find my effective force first. This is a flat surface. So I know I'm gonna to have to do cosine of 35 is equal to my effective force over my hypotenuse, which is 122 Newtons. Okay, so that's gonna be my first step actually. So my effective force turns out to be 100 newtons. Now that I have my effective force, I can put it in here. I have my amount of energy, my work, which is my W over here. So all I'm missing is my distance. So 1200 joules, just lower this a bit. Okay, so times, uh, no, sorry, equals um, effective force, which is 100 newtons times my distance. And so my distance is equal to 12 meters. All right, so that's it for that one. And actually, that's it for the various problems I wanted to go over. So hopefully this clarifies matters. If you have questions, please reach out. And otherwise, I'll see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.